frame rate. In the world of interactive games, there is arguably no metric more important. A high frame rate means smoother action and faster response, enabling a more enjoyable gaming experience as a result. While some would argue that the mass market cares more about flashy visuals than fast performance, the reality is higher frame rates can make a difference even if players don't fully appreciate why. The fluidity and responsiveness with which the Call of Duty games have become known is very likely one key to its success after all. So when it was announced that Halo 5 would target 60 frames per second for the first time in series history, we were interested to see just what that meant for the presentation and how well it could hold this target. After three years in development, we finally have the answer. This is John from Digital Foundry, and today we're going to dive deeper into Halo 5 Guardians to discover just what it takes to deliver a completely stable 60 frames per second in a modern shooter. Delivering a consistent frame rate requires a very careful approach to development, one that takes the target frame rate into account at all times. It's an approach that Nintendo has become well known for, yet, if you look at most of their 60 frames per second titles, you'll find that most of these games are relatively constrained. They are perfectly polished to deliver a very specific type of experience without the level of unpredictability you get with something like Halo. It's this unpredictability that makes Halo 5's accomplishments really stand out. We've played through Halo 5 now and spent plenty of time in the multiplayer and can confirm that the game holds a rock solid 60 frames per second 99% of the time. With this in mind, the question becomes, how were the game's visuals balanced in order to achieve this objective? Just what is the price of 60 frames per second? Image quality is the first point of discussion here. 343 has opted for a dynamic resolution solution that makes near, constant adjustments to resolution based on the load. The idea is that players are less likely to notice the drop in resolution during combat. In the case of Halo 5, the solution is adaptive enough to completely avoid over budget frames. What's fascinating about the dynamic resolution feature in Halo 5 is just how variable it really is. We've examined countless images now only to find that Halo 5 adjusts the X and Y values independently. We know that the resolution bottoms out around 1152 by 810, but these values are constantly being adjusted. The nature of this system is actually quite a feat of engineering in its effectiveness. Texture filtering predictably takes a hit as well, with low levels of filtering used across the game. While the impact of these decisions is clearly felt, we do feel it's a fair trade-off to make for such a consistent level of performance. Image quality is a good place to start, but optimizations go far beyond this. Let's take a look at Halo 5's level of detail system. As in many games, object detail is adjusted based on proximity. This means that models will use lower quality assets from a distance, with higher quality models being swapped in as the players move closer. The issue here is that these LODs often appear too close to the player and lack any sort of transition. It just sort of pops. Take a look at this scene. Notice how the background geometry pops in as we move closer and further. We see similar things here around this pool of water. World geometry is swapped in first, followed by details such as foliage around the water's edge. Then we have crumbs the smaller objects used to add extra detail to a scene. You can see it here with the abundance of rocks spread along the ground. As players move closer to the debris, you'll notice a mesh pattern is used to transition between different levels of detail. This is actually a method that was used in Bungie's games as well, but in Halo 5 we noticed instances where dithering remains present even at very close proximity. This sort of dynamic adjustment also applies to shadows and lighting as well. Halo 5 makes heavy use of pre-calculated lighting in order to improve rendering speed while dynamic shadows and light sources are utilized primarily by actors in the scene. First off, let's take a look at the baked spotlight in the building here. Notice as we move in and out, there is a swapping between lower and higher quality that occurs. Swapping between the two levels of quality definitely appears jarring throughout the game and sometimes gives the impression of instability in objects. Shadows are another interesting subject. 
Halo 5 makes use of different types of shadows of varying quality depending on the scene. We have pre-calculated shadow maps mixed with more dynamic shadows throughout the game. The approach is consistent with earlier Halo games, but manages to stand out a bit more in Halo 5. We'll look at the shadows on this building here as we move in and out. Clearly, at a certain distance, a low quality solution is utilized to provide basic shading, but once the player moves in a bit closer, a higher quality version is used. The issue here is that, once again, the distance to the player is relatively small, leading to very obvious draw-in at many points. We can see the same thing here. We see a completely unshadowed area gain shadows as we move in closer. More dynamic shadows are rather interesting in Halo 5. We see an aggressive solution used for displaying dynamic shadows in various situations. In this scene, note how shadows disappear completely just a few meters from the objects in question. How about this situation, where we have two shadow variants that are composited together? The dynamic character shadows once again disappear at a relatively close range. All of these issues do seem to vary based on environment size and complexity. Multiplayer maps tend to fare better in general, with less obvious popping. These adjustments all help make a stable 60 frames per second possible in Halo 5. Due to the variations in appearance, it does seem as if 343 made plenty of adjustments during development to keep the frame rate high. So how about alpha effects? Smoke, fire, and other alpha blended operations require more from the GPU and as a result can drop the frame rate when in close proximity to the viewport. 343 has taken two different approaches to this problem. Firstly, alpha effects used during gameplay are rendered at a lower resolution much of the time. You can see this here. This certainly requires less of the GPU and as a result performance remains smoother. While the resulting effects can appear somewhat pixelated when looking closely, during normal gameplay this generally isn't an issue due to the speed at which the effects disappear. For the environmental alpha effects we see a different approach entirely. Look at the fire in this scene. As we walk into the fire, note how it disappears or changes appearance. It would appear that effects are called from view as the player approaches. We see the same thing here, and here as well. This certainly helps prevent people from shoving the camera right into a fire texture and dropping the frame rate, but it can result in some rather awkward looking moments. On a side note, we did spend some time testing the artificial intelligence in the game and ran across a curious issue. In one mission, when allowing an AI squad member to drive, they were unable to figure out how to bypass this section. It just went back and forth for several minutes until we eventually hopped out and continued on foot. Of course, this is an issue we've seen throughout the series since it was introduced in Halo 2, so it's not too surprising, but we had hoped for some improvements. Of course, while all these compromises can appear noticeable, the game still manages to look very attractive. Let's take a look at some of the highlights. Light shafts have been implemented using a screen space technique and are tastefully used while a simple but effective texture based solution also adds to certain scenes. Volumetric lighting would have proven far too expensive for this game, but the selected effects work well enough as you can see. Particle effects are also strong. As enemies are vanquished, we see a shower of particles explode around the player. It looks nice, and it never incurs a performance hit. We've already examined the water effects, which are a nice return to form with actual ripples appearing in response to player actions, but oddly enough, we ran into a couple of instances where water did not respond to the player at all. How odd. Materials are another interesting point of discussion. 343 has adopted a physically based pipeline with Halo 5, and the results are, well, variable. Certain materials, such as the metalwork in Mission 2, actually look rather convincing as you can see here. The same can be said of the stonework in this mission. The sandy terrain takes on a properly diffuse appearance that really conveys the dryness of the environment. There's a nice attention to detail in the maps as well. Note how the billboard display actually breaks down to individual RGB elements as we bring the camera in for a close-up. How about the debris flying around this level? If we zoom in, you'll see an impressively high resolution texture in use here. 
the PBR implementation here isn't always so convincing, however. A lot of materials have a rather polymer look to them, as you can see here. The real issue with texture quality, however, is the prevalence of low-resolution textures in normal maps. Just take a look at this. In many cases, the base textures are of high enough resolution, but layers used to add extra detail wind up looking rather chunky, leading to some less than optimal results. Of course, in other areas, the primary textures aren't all that sharp either. We feel that higher quality texture work across the board, coupled with improved texture filtering, would have made a huge difference overall. Ultimately though, as you can see, the sacrifices made here are significant, yet Halo 5 is still an excellent looking game. The art direction is beautiful and the frame rate never budges. 343 has worked within the constraints of the hardware platform and delivered something really special. With such a strong first effort under its belt, we can't wait to see what 343's engineering team can come up with next. Anyways, that wraps it up for this video. If you're looking for more details, be sure to check out the full article itself. And if you enjoyed this video and would like to keep up with Digital Foundry, be sure to hit subscribe below. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this is John, over and out.